Conversations about the war are not just taking place on college campuses, they're also taking place online. A lot of attention has been placed on X, formerly known as Twitter, since Elon Musk took over the company. A lot of users reported a spike in hate speech on the platform. Musk himself amplified anti-Semitic conspiracy theory on X a few weeks ago, leading some major advertisers to leave the platform. Today, Elon Musk traveled to Israel and met with the country's prime minister. Musk and Netanyahu visited the community that was attacked by Hamas on October 7th. NBC News correspondent Jake Ward joins me now. So, Jake, first off, what was the point of this trip ultimately? Is this about business or is it almost an apology tour for the many challenges Musk has faced? Well, Zingley, it certainly had the feeling of an apology tour. As you mentioned there, Musk has been under fire for the last basically week and a half since he seemed to endorse uh, an anti-Semitic conspiracy theory on his own platform and led to the outrage uh, and withdrawal of advertising revenue that, that uh, followed. You know, you we're looking at a platform that at this point is, seems to be losing tens of millions of dollars uh, and charges that he uh, had engaged with this anti-Semitic content and is promoting hate speech along with a long pattern of that kind of content from Musk in the past seems to have led him to make this trip. He seems to have gotten what he wanted out of it, uh, posting on X afterwards, actions speak louder than words, seeming to, to declare that the optics here are uh, exactly what he intended, Zinclay. And Jake, what about the optics for Israel or Netanyahu? Do they gain anything from his visit? They certainly do. You have to remember, right, Sinclair, he's not just the CEO of Tesla, SpaceX, and the Platform X. He's also the CEO of Starlink, the huge communication satellite network that has been a lifeline for communities all over the world and, in some cases, has been a, a terribly important piece of tactical hardware. In this case, Shlomo Karhai, the communications minister under Netanyahu, posted afterwards on X that he had secured an agreement with Musk to not give the residents of Gaza access to Starlink internet unless the Israeli authorities authorize it ahead of time. And so here we have a, a coming together of two people uh, in what looks like a, a simple sort of diplomatic mission, but it turns out there was something very important in it for each of them, and they both seem to have gotten what they wanted here, Zikley. Yeah, a lot of layers in this one. Jake Ward, thank you. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.